it's that time of year again. Halloween is upon us in full force. The winds have begun to whisper coldly in the distance. The summer skies have been covered by the deathly autumn clouds. And that ghastly figure in the dark has returned yet again to welcome you to 31 more days of fear and fright. I'm excited too, but before we jump into things, I think it's only appropriate that I dress appropriately for the occasion. Not because it's Halloween, but because we're going to be talking about Ghostbusters. Ah, much better. Now, as you can tell by my costume, Ghostbusters is going to be a topic of this video. But if you've seen the name of the video, Extreme Ghostbusters is also going to be a topic. So, what exactly is Extreme Ghostbusters? Back in 1997, Extreme Ghostbusters was a reboot of the Ghostbusters franchise, which at the time included the two films and the animated series that ran from 1986 to 1991. This new series was intended to reintroduce the Ghostbusters franchise to a new generation. Instead of rebooting the entire show, Extreme Ghostbusters takes place a few years after the events of the real Ghostbusters. A whole slew of new ghosts are wreaking havoc in New York. The last remaining Ghostbuster in town, Dr. Egon Spangler, has designed new and improved equipment to bust the new and improved ghosts. But Egon can't go it alone, so he hires an extreme group of college kids to bust the extreme ghosts with the extreme equipment. Kylie Griffin, Eduardo Rivera, Roland Jackson, and Garrett Miller step up to the plate to become the extreme Ghostbusters. I loved this cartoon as a kid. It stayed true to the Ghostbusters name in many ways and is a welcome addition to the franchise. But of course with the name Ghostbusters attached to it, merchandising had to be involved. Home videos, toys, and of course, video games. Today, we'll be looking at three games based off of Extreme Ghostbusters. Extreme Ghostbusters for Game Boy Color, Code Ecto-1 for Game Boy Advance, and The Ultimate Invasion for the PS1. There were five games in total based off of Extreme Ghostbusters, but I won't be looking at the two PC games. One looks like a puzzle game and the other one was a virtual coloring book, so I'll just pass on those two. And now that we're done with the formalities, let's fire it up and get this show on the road! First, let's take a look at Extreme Ghostbusters for the Game Boy Color. What's that, Janine? There's ghosts on the roof of the restaurant? No problem! We're all suited up and ready to go! And it's a Class 6? The scale only goes to 7! We can charge them more for that! Okay, there's you. Your job as an extreme Ghostbuster is to traverse the landscape and bust all the ghosts on screen. That's it. As soon as the last ghost is busted, the level is over and you go on to the next level. You start out as Eduardo, but if you hold select and press B, you can cycle through the other extreme Ghostbusters. Yes, I know, select and B. Give the Game Boy a break. There are only four buttons to work with. You'd think that each character would have different abilities, but I can't really find any differences in speed, jumping, or general busting. Well, Garrett can't climb ladders because he's in a wheelchair, so that goes without saying. I think his wheelchair is also glitching out the game. This is a basic platformer. You run, you jump, you take damage, it's all here. But when it comes to enemies, you gotta bust out your proton pack and eliminate them with brute force. Press that B button and earn your paycheck. Well, like I said before, the Game Boy didn't have a lot going for it, but back to the game. You can attack ghosts with the Proton Stream. You also have the ability to aim your stream in a full 360 degree motion. Ghosts at 2 o'clock? No problem. Haunts at high noon? Things are looking up. Trying to sneak up on me? I don't think so. Now let's get a good look at this Class 6 that's causing so much trouble. For those of you that aren't well versed in the paranormal, a Class 6 spirit is a ghost that takes the form of an animal. So let's head to the top of each diner and see what Marley's been up to since he bought the farm. That doesn't look like any animal. Wait a second, that's not a Class 6, it's a Class 5. 
an apparition not of this world that crossed over from the spirit dimension, like Slimer. That means we can't charge as much money as we thought. I mean, oh no, ghost dog! Well, now that level one is in the bag, and that pesky ghost dog is out of the diner, let's reflect on the Game Boy Color ghost-busting experience. Oh, Game Boy, I can only defend you so much. Pokemon you can, extreme ghostbusters you cannot. This game just doesn't give you a good experience. I don't feel like I'm busting ghosts, it's more like I'm shooting generic enemies with a ray gun. There's no wrangling and trapping, it's just point, shoot, proceed. I will give it credit for allowing you to choose between all four extreme Ghostbusters. The controls aren't all that bad, but could have used a little more work. The animations of running and climbing are also very well done. Speaking of animations, why does Egon look like he melted? Poor Egon. Extreme Ghostbusters on the Game Boy Color? Can't say I'm a fan. Let's see how well the game made the jump to the Game Boy Advance with Code Ecto-1. We start our game with a monologue with a slightly better animated Egon, but his patch is on the wrong side. Let's fix that with a little mirror flip. There we go. Like I said, Egon is telling you, the gamer, about their planned trip to sunny Hawaii, but Roland and Garrett never showed up to the airport on time. It seems that they got caught up in some paranormal happenings in New York, so it's up to Kylie and Eduardo to save their two friends so they can all go on vacation. Looks like the game's starting, and whoa, we're driving the Ecto-1! Awesome! Before each platforming stage, you have to drive the Ecto-1 through New York City in order to get to your destination. You only have 30 seconds to get there, so move it or lose it. Luckily for you, someone was kind enough to drop stopwatches in the middle of the road that give you a bonus 4 seconds on the clock. This is fun and all, but it seems a bit unnecessary. There's no real skill involved, or ghosts. Just dodge the cars and roadblocks and you'll get there in no time. Speaking of time, if you run out, you'll get an instant game over and you'll have to go all the way back to the main menu. That's fair, isn't it? Anyways, once you get to your destination, it's time to take care of those pesky ghosts as two of the four extreme Ghostbusters. Just like the last game, you get to choose your character on the fly. And since the Game Boy Advance added those fancy new shoulder buttons, changing your character is easy. Just press the L button, and you can switch between Kylie and Eduardo. But unlike the last game, both characters have different attributes. Eduardo is a bit sluggish, but he's able to throw a more powerful proton stream that can take out enemies a lot quicker. He is also able to aim his stream downwards to shoot floorbound enemies. Kylie is much quicker and is able to perform a double jump to help reach higher planes to collect some of the more out of reach items. Just like in the cartoon, she's equipped with her proton pistol. Instead of a steady stream, it only shoots out in bursts, even though it didn't really do that in the cartoon. Kylie also cannot aim downwards, but is still able to shoot in every other direction. Both characters are equipped with their own special items by pressing the R button. Kylie throws out a ghost trap that captures any ghost on screen. Eduardo has a small bomb that will either destroy any ghosts in the vicinity of the explosion, or will destroy the slime walls that block the way of the various collectibles. It will also hurt Eduardo. Of course, being a platform game, there are a number of collectibles. Additional items, extra lives, cano hearts, it's all here. The most common collectibles are stars, for some reason. Collecting stars will add points to your overall score, which doesn't matter. And collecting a set number will give you an extra life. The enemies are a real pushover. They're the average slow-moving sprites with predictable pass. Shoot up at the big ghost, shoot down towards the floor blobs, you get used to it really fast. Then there's the spooky janitor, which could be classified as a class 4, spirit with a distinct human form and personality with known identity. Tremble in fear as he shuffles closer and closer to you, ready to attack at a moment's notice. And then you just shoot him and you keep going. Here's a quick rundown of the game. Each level has about 3-4 to four stages. You make it through the stage, you collect a piece of a picture, the game goes Egon talks to you, you go to the next stage, find another piece of the picture, Egon talks to you some more, then there's a boss fight, and then you're done with the level. There's four levels. This game is short. The bosses in this game are quite interesting. Take for example the first boss. In order to cause damage, you need to shoot her in the face. 
but you can't do that until you remove all the snakes off of her. After all the snakes are gone, she'll be ready to take damage. After a set amount of damage, she'll take off and you'll have to duck as she flies by, and then rinse and repeat until she explodes in 10,000 points. The other levels aren't anything special. Level 2 is a spooky cemetery that leads into a maze. It's not really a maze, it's just a long sequence of screens that takes a long time to finish. The good news is there's no boss. The abandoned theater is a strange clown boss. The last level is actually a bit creepy. It's a giant botanical garden full of ghost plants and swinging pendulums of thorny death. The worst part about this level is you have to find switches placed all around the place to open hatches to advance to the next part. Very time consuming, I wasn't a fan. And as always, the final boss is found here in the final level. It's some giant gargoyle that throws fireballs and flies around in a repeating pattern. You'll have to use both Kylie and Eduardo to help put an end to this evil demon. I used Kylie to jump over the flames and Eduardo to shoot him in the face. Once you've shot him in the face enough times, Roland and Garrett will return, you'll get a nice character page, the team finally goes to Hawaii, and the game ends. Despite the name Extreme, this game is pretty average. The controls are good, graphics are nice, the characters are... there. They could have done a lot more with the source material, but it seems like they focused more on the actual playing of the game than the telling of the story. For a handheld platformer, the game's alright. But for a Ghostbusters game, they could have done a lot more with it. It's not the best Ghostbusters game, but it's most definitely not the worst. Not the worst. And now we get to leave the handheld market and move on to console territory. Let's see what the PS1 has to offer in terms of Extreme Ghostbusters. Extreme Ghostbusters The Ultimate Invasion, a European only release, was released in 2004 on the PS1. It used a similar first person gameplay style relative to the popular Time Crisis arcade games. It also supports the gun cons so you can get a better ghost busting experience. But enough of the technical stuff, there are games to be played, so let's start playing this one. Check it out, everyone's present and accounted for. In this game, you get to choose which extreme ghostbuster you want to be. They all even have their own individual stats. But wait, why is Garrett the slowest? He shouldn't be the slowest. Garrett was an adrenaline junkie and physically fit. He lifted weights, played basketball, and even base jumped off of a building. But I should know better than to expect a licensed video game to stay true to the source material. Anyways, I'm sticking with Kylie, since she's the most balanced and was voiced by Tara Strong. Look, it's the opening to the cartoon. Why isn't the theme song playing? What's with the ambient noise? Those aren't the right sound effects. Do they not have full rights to the show? What's this panel storyline? Why is this game failing so hard? Well, let's see another cutscene. That's not what the Ecto-1 sounds like. Here's what it should sound like. Well, now the game's starting. There's a ghost. Got it. There's another one. I got it. Okay... What is this? This isn't extreme. This is stupid! That's basically how you play the game. Go show up, you point at it, shoot it three times, it explodes. If you're not quick enough, they'll throw spit wads at you. You can either shoot them out of the sky or duck and cover. Speaking of duck and cover, that's how you recharge your weapon. Just duck behind the barrier and your pack will recharge. If you don't like shooting in small bursts, you can fire the full proton stream. What was that? Who switched my proton canister with silly string? Hold on game, let me fix that for you. You're welcome. Speaking of bad graphics, what happened to Kylie? She looks like cigarettes ruined her life. Or maybe her equipment malfunctioned and she's been breathing in ecto fumes. Oh, I've been a ghostbuster for 20 years. It's ruined my life and my complexion. This job ain't worth it, kids. Be a doctor or something. You don't want to end up like old Kylie over here. Hey! Cool red ghost. Basically, you stay in one spot until you shoot all the ghosts. Then you proceed to the next section, shoot all the ghosts, 
and zombies, and you go to the next section. Duck? Like a duck ghost? Another class six! Where is it? Those things are floating gold! Oh, it meant the light post. Let's take a look at the boss. Yay? This game shouldn't exist. Not even my love of Ghostbusters can help shine a positive light on this title. The gameplay is too simplistic, it completely disregards the source material, and it was released on a then-dying console. The PS2 had already been out for four years. They could have at least considered releasing the game on the console that wasn't on its last leg. I think this game is the very definition of a cash-in. They took a poorly made game, slapped a franchise on it, and put it on sale. Enough said. And with that, we've reached the end of our little foray into the video game world of Extreme Ghostbusters. All I have to say to you is, if you want to get into Extreme Ghostbusters, just watch the cartoon and skip the games. Unfortunately, it's not going to be easy to get into Extreme Ghostbusters. The series has never been fully released on DVD. From the looks of things, I'm not so sure it will ever see a release. But with services like Netflix and Hulu, there's a good chance we can see it show up in one form or another. And as always, thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed your visit. And DUCK! That'll be 650. Scene 9. <laughs> <laughs> ah.